Hello and welcome to another CLI Magic video. This video will go over the param function which I posted on Friday, September 28th. This was actually created by Brimstone who is a frequent CLI Magic contributor uh, with some modifications by me. I saw a few uh, ways to make it a little bit shorter. But it didn't get very much feedback and I think the reason why is because people didn't understand what it did. It was a little bit difficult to figure out why you know what the eval was for and uh, the variable expansion and and why aliases were being created but when it comes down to it it's actually a very useful function um, and it it used almost every type of you know it used several different types of um, shell functionality you know from functions to uh, loops to aliases to variable expansion evals it was I think it was the first time I used practically everything um, which is neat so what it does now this is two different uh, there's two different commands here basically the first part is to define the function and then the second part was to actually set up these aliases which use the function but Basically, it's a way of shortcutting awk so that you can get a column of output. So if you want to have just the first column of output, uh, let's, like here I have a uh, Apache log file. Let's say I just want the host names. I could just say call col1 and then um, as its input, use the access log. And so that gives me just the first column. If I just wanted the fourth column, I would just say col4 and you know seven if I want the seventh column which is the uh, the file that's being accessed so how this works is that okay let's so let's get rid of the loop that creates the aliases so how this part works is that remember dollar one in a function means take the first argument and dollar two means take the second argument so this defines a function that will take a column number and then an optional second argument if you don't define it it'll default to nothing if you do define it then it'll set this string it'll output the string which basically tells awk what field separator to use so optionally you could you know use like a colon and and then um, get the first get the first column of output from Etsy password or something like that this is a fun this is a variable expansion this um, dollar curly braces two colon plus this means only output if if two is actually set to something so if two isn't set to any, anything it's going to output nothing but if two is set to something then it's going to output this dash f space two so if if it doesn't output the dash f then awk defaults to having the white space set as a separator um, so that's kind of handy Previously, uh, he was trying to do like a long if statement and stuff like that. And I've always wanted to be able to use um, this type of variable expansion, but I could never really find a good use for it. And this seemed like the right time to use it. So I was really excited that we got to use this, this type of all or nothing uh, variable expansion. Um, so it was pretty neat. And then um, since awk this of the, the reason why you need the eval is because if you didn't it wouldn't actually turn the dollar it wouldn't actually turn the dollar one into its argument value um, and dollar two into its argument value so it would pass like dollar dollar one to awk um, if you didn't use the eval and then you'd end up getting a syntax error so this is why you have to you have to backslash the first dollar sign so that that ends up in the awk command 
So it ends up being print space dollar and then whatever column you gave it. So, you know, the param is you give it a column number here, tenth column, you know, a hundredth column, whatever you want. Uh, you could even say, you know, you could even say NR for a uh, number of records, um, which would give you the last column. Uh, let's actually, let's try that. I haven't tried that yet. I'm curious. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Not number of records, number of fields. Okay, so this gives the last column. And I wonder, this might not work, but one thing you can do, yeah, okay, there we go. So you can actually give it arguments like that that you would normally give to awk, and then you can go from the end if you want to. So that's neat. Okay, so that pretty much covers how the param function works. And then the other part of it was the alias part. And basically all I'm doing here is I'm going through a for loop and saying you know create 10 aliases that have the name you know start with the name prefix col for column and then the end of it is the column number basically and call for each one of those aliases call param with that number argument and since these are aliases you can actually get away with saying like call for and then I can give it a second argument like let's say a, a colon uh, and I can pass in Etsy password and I get you know uh, the fourth column from Etsy password so that's pretty neat I thought it was a an interesting use of uh, of everything basically um, usually I don't encourage people to use um, variables and aliases, but in this case, it's it's somewhat harmless. You know, usually the the rule of thumb is that if you want to have arguments or variables, you you put them into a function, and if you just want to have you know a string replaced with another string, uh, then you use an alias. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from doing this type of thing where you know you're putting dollar i into it, but Keep in mind that this dollar i is actually expanded in the loop, not at runtime. So when it's going through this each time, it's actually setting, it's basically saying alias col1 equals param1. So it does that for this and then, you know, for two. So the for loop just does that part for me. So it's not actually setting it to like dollar i or something like that. So that, that might be a little bit confusing when you first look at it. Um, and it might also be maybe a little bit confusing that you could give it an R argument. And, uh, that, you know, some people, when they use aliases, they think that they can take argument parameters like $1, $2, but they really don't. And they might end up fooling themselves into uh, thinking that they do because something like this ends up working. But that I'll save that for another video. I could probably explain better the difference between aliases and functions. So, hopefully this you'll find this uh, to be a useful one. You could change the for loop here to be as much as you want. You know, you could make it 100, and then you would have a, um, a hundred different column uh, markers, or you know, you can set an alias that's called colnr, and that would just use the last one. Ah, I keep on saying nr. I mean to say nf for number of fields. Nr is number of records, so that's basically how many how many records you have in a file, um, in an input file. So, which of course would, you know, if you have more lines and you do columns, it's not going to work. All right, well, I'll see you next time.